mention that we had a bunch of free stuff from McDonald's. Um, because of the snowstorm here, they had to clear out their freezer. They couldn't keep anything left, I guess. They had another truck coming. So they gave their employees, my oldest son, um, kind of the leftovers of everything. So I'm covered up with a bunch of bread. Um, we've got little baby hamburger buns. Uh, we've got Big Mac buns, which I had never seen before. I don't know if anybody's ever seen a Big Mac bun, but this like shocked me. Let's see if I can get one out of here. So they come like this and it looks like a bun, right? And you take it apart and it has an extra bun. I know I'm, I'm probably easily amused, but that was shocking to me. Um, I don't know, not, not exactly a McDonald's knower of all. Um, so we got a bunch of tortillas. I don't even know how many are in there. Um, we're gonna be using those for the breakfast burritos. We got a bunch of English muffins. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So 24 English muffins that we'll use um, for those. We'll do egg and cheese for my daughter who doesn't eat pork. And then we'll do um, bacon, egg and cheese for everybody else. We got some super questionable cheese. Um, I've never really eaten cheese like this, but we had it last night on some burgers that we cooked that we got from McDonald's. It was actually pretty good. We got a whole box of apple fritters. Um, my kids don't usually get stuff like this, so they ate them um, in no time. And then also we had a full box of blueberry muffins. Um, this morning we have one sad, lonely muffin left because again, they're not used to having that much junk food. So they went bye-bye fast. Uh, let's see. And then we got a whole box of their sliced tomatoes. Um, I got a little nervous because they said use through this date, but apparently that's the date that they pulled them out of the fridge on, I don't know. So they weren't bad, I promise. I'm not feeding anybody any moldy tomatoes. Um, we did okay. We got two huge bags of lettuce. If anybody knows if you can freeze lettuce, let me know. I have no idea what we're gonna do with this. Um, I thought about maybe making it into like a coleslaw or something. Uh, but I can't even eat that much coleslaw in that much time. So can you ferment lettuce? I guess we might find out. Um, so these are some of the patties. They were quarter pounder patties. I never had those either. Um, they actually cooked up pretty nice at home. My husband um, was a cook at McDonald's and so he wasn't surprised by them, but I was kind of shocked. They gave us a whole box and I had took them out of the box and froze them. So they come like this and they seem just like any other hamburger that you buy at the grocery store. And obviously all of this is not organic. Um, I guess I kind of toe the line, like I'm a cheapskate organic purchaser. So I try and keep everything 80-20. Um, but if somebody gives me free food, I eat it. Uh, so that's where we are here. So we're gonna mix a lot of this stuff in with our organic food, our organic eggs, um, organic cheese, organic vegetables, make breakfast out of it and try and see how far we can go with free McDonald's. We had a couple of other things that we forgot to mention. This is weird to do with your finger coming into the camera. Don't quite understand that yet. Um, but yeah, so Canadian bacon, there's like a big package. I don't think I've ever seen this much Canadian bacon, but I'm cool with that. Um, and then these little diced up apples are gonna go into um, apple, like a baked apple oatmeal kind of thing. We do that pretty frequently. Um, and then the Canadian bacon will go on mine and my older son's muffins. And stuff them in the oven because I feel like when they're toasted, they freeze a little better. And then do as many of these as I possibly can. Strangely enough, the, the, the muffin, no, the, Double, the quarter pounder, what are those things? Quarter pounder? Yeah, the quarter pounder buns, like you just like, and they open these ones. You have to like spend your life pulling them apart. I probably should have just cut them with a knife, but we were like past that by then. So we'll throw these guys in the oven. And while I do that, I will get some round eggs ready to make the girls breakfast. And I know a lot of people are going to be kind of weird, like, oh, why doesn't her daughter eat pork? Like, why does she cater to her? Why does she let her not eat pork? Um, it's because she eats a really balanced diet. And when she was about four years old, she decided that she really liked pigs, like, loved them. She is a pig fan. She's got pig jewelry. She's got pig pillows. Uh, when she was little, she had, like, pig stuffed animals. Well, she probably still does, but she probably doesn't want everybody to know that. 
Um, and she ate so well, like ate all her vegetables that she used to trade her brothers, her pork off her plate and they would give her the things that they didn't like. Um, so for the oldest one, he would like give her her broccoli and the middle one would give her his sweet potatoes or whatever. Um, so it actually worked out and I figured there's enough people in the world that don't eat pork that when she grows up, she probably won't have a hard time eating or she won't have to worry about being rude at other people's houses. She can just say she doesn't eat pork and I think people almost understand. So we're not super squishy and new school about food around here. Normally what you get is what you eat. Um, but we make a little bit of exception here and there for picks. Organic unsalted butter, which is like the holy grail of butter. For some reason, everybody makes organic salted butter, um, but we're not a huge fan of salt. I've had some issues with salt in the past, so we try to, try to limit it um, just for my health. I mean, it's fine for everybody else, but they get to go along with me in the unsalty road of butter. Um, so we throw like a tablespoon of butter in there, and then I'm gonna crack four of these eggs. And I'm actually kind of scared to do this in front of people because my fried eggs are kind of fugly. Um, they're not beautiful at all, um, but she's gonna eat them on egg McMuffins. They'll be covered up by a nice little bun and some cheese so she won't see them. And she doesn't judge me anyways because she gets free food and she lives here, so. Chris always cracked his eggs on the side of a bowl instead of on the counter. Um, and that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't know if that's normal or if I'm weird, uh, maybe let me know. Uh, but I feel like you don't get as many shells in there if you do it that way. That one was ugly. But generally they kind of come apart a little better for me. Um, he does it my way now, so I think I win. Okay, try not to overcrowd them. That's part of my problem. I get impatient, I get excited, and then I put too many in. So we'll let those fry for a minute, flip them over, pull the English muffins out of the oven, and throw some super questionable McDonald's cheese on it, and she'll be good. I'll have her come out here and plastic wrap them, and she'll have breakfast for a good three or four weeks. Oh dear, I'm not good at this part. Fried eggs tend to turn out like scrambled, accidentally scrambled. <laughs> Let's see, come here buddy, you can do. Aha, one. <laughs> to people who can turn over a fried egg super easy, like kudos to you, because I'm about that life, I just am unable to be. Come on, come on. Oh, that one almost made it. At least he didn't like get squishy everywhere. Okay, we're making progress here. I'm gonna get you. Mm -hmm. Sound effects necessary, in case you're wondering. Okay. Yeah, I am not the prettiest cook, that's for sure. Tastes good, looks kinda questionable. I think you're the prettiest cook. <laughs> that's cause you love me. Realize that I cannot count at all. Uh, these make six McMuffin imposters each. And again, excuse the mess that is my McMuffin, but I counted each individual bread rather than each top and bottom together. So she'll wind up getting 12 out of these. And then here's my assembler. He's a little bit disappointed in this effort um, because he does not work in the kitchen at work and he doesn't particularly want to do it here, but free food comes with a price. This is the price of breakfast around here. We've kind of got a little assembly line going. Normally I cook the thing and then someone assembles them and then my daughter will package them to go in the freezer. Um, plastic wrap hates me. I get it all jumbled up every time. Um, it's a big mess and for some reason it really likes her. So we like to let her shine, let her do the thing that she's awesome with, which is packing in plastic wrap the breakfast. Okay, 
for the next round of breakfast prep, we're gonna do some breakfast tacos. I always wind up calling them burritos, but I found whenever I make them into tacos, they cook better in the microwave. Less cheese seepage, which is very important. We wanna keep all our cheese. So I've got 24 eggs going in here for the first batch, and we'll put some vegetables in them and then some meat and see how we do. Part of the reason that I do this batch cooking slash meal prepping thing is because I'm a little messy. I had like some man overboard situation here. I'm not sure how much of my egg that I've lost, but I'm mourning it. Um, for those who scramble mini eggs, how do you cook them? So I like put all of mine in and when the whites start getting really done, I will um, smash the yellows. And then I cook them until they're like really done. I don't like drippy eggs. My oldest does, but I am not a fan. Um, so I actually saw this video on YouTube. I think I can link it um, about cooking eggs a whole bunch of different ways and how you're supposed to scramble them. And I didn't realize that that was a possibility. Um, this is what we get here and I don't really deviate from it. Um, so let me know if you think hard scrambled or squishy scrambled or drippy scrambled are better. If any of you are wondering why we eat so many eggs around here, this is the reason why. This is Chris and we try to feed him. He's what I'd like to call athletic. These are some thick peppers. Like look at this jalapeno. Like normally the jalapenos that we get are like half this size. And then these guys are like super tall. I don't know if you can see how big of a pepper that is. And we saw them in the bag earlier, but I'm still just like shocked and in awe of how big these peppers are. So normally I would buy about eight jalapenos for our tacos that are not burritos. I'm gonna get it right. And I would normally go ahead and do two bell peppers, colored bell peppers, like a orange and a red, like what we have here. Um, but most of the time I put onions in it, but since we have so many of these gargantuan vegetables, I don't think I'm gonna do that today. We got all the peppers in the pan, the bell peppers in this one, the jalapenos in this one. Some people like it hot and some people don't. I love it hot. Um, so we'll put those in there. I only wound up using about half of these. We we'll use the other half for something else because those were gigantic peppers. Um, a lot of times I'll put bacon in with the jalapenos um, to fry them in grease, but this time I didn't. I realized that we bought bacon but we also got the free Canadian bacon. So I'm gonna chop that up and put it in the burritos slash taco things instead. So this is what we're left with. This is two blocks of Colby Jack cheese that you saw earlier, 24 eggs, the two bell peppers all mixed up with the KitchenAid. And we're gonna take half of this to do the breakfast tacos that won't have any meat in them. And then we'll do half with the jalapenos and the Canadian bacon that we got for free. Niles is doing the assembly. He kind of does this for me most of the time. We've got pretty assigned kitchen duties by now, now that they're almost adults. I don't know what I'm gonna do when they grow up and leave me, I guess, cook less. Um, so we heated these tortillas up, the ones that we got free, and he's putting a half a cup of the egg, cheese, pepper mixture in each one. I promise my counters are clean. That might gross somebody out, but fine for us. So that's how we do it. 
having to change it up a little bit because I don't know if you can tell, but these tortillas are pretty big. They're like a lot bigger than the ones that we normally use. Let's see, you can see my little hand there. And this is like a half a cup. So we normally use a half a cup of filling per tortilla, but these ones are bigger. So I made the second batch and I added more Canadian bacon than I thought I was going to. I also added the rest of that third block of cheese that we had already shredded. And we'll see if we can get more than, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tacos out of all of this mix. The last recipe of the day is going to be a baked oatmeal with these chopped apples that we got, um, the free ones. They were in little packets, so um, we took them all out of the packets and they came out to be, I don't know, a pretty good amount. <clears throat> we're letting the rest of our, woohoo, lost some. Can't lose them. Um, we're letting the rest of our food that my daughter packaged up uh, cool down before we put it in the reusable freezer bags. And then if I find that we don't have enough apples for the baked oatmeal, there's some more of these and I'll just give them a good chop and we'll put them in there all the same. So I actually really like this recipe and I've been using it for a really long time. It came from Budget Bites. It was her banana nut baked oatmeal and I'll link that. Um, but I've kind of, I've kind of ruined her recipe over the years. I actually just took a look at it and realized that I am not cooking hardly anything the same that she is cooking it. Um, so I will do it my way and see how that goes. Uh, we do this probably about, I don't know, every other month in the winter, we make a big batch for the month and then we eat it and then we start over again. Um, so it works well for me the way I do it, but I think if you're first starting to do it, that you should probably do it the right way. Um, so this is the stuff that we've got. We've got some organic rolled oats that I had in the pantry, um, some milk that I got lucky and bought. Last week I bought two or three milks, you know, the regular vanilla, salt, baking powder, brown sugar. Um, I'm trying to replace this with these, this organic cane sugar, but we still had this one. So I thought I'd go ahead and go through it. Um, cinnamon, which I'm not a huge fan of. So I'm going to go light with this and then a couple eggs that you use to get it to like thicken and stand up. Here's the setup. So I doubled a lot of the recipe that Budget Bites has, <clears throat> excuse me, and I made um, a couple changes. One is that I put less cinnamon. I put more vanilla because I really like vanilla. And then the big one I think for a lot of people is that I put half as much of the brown sugar in as it called for. I find that, you know, a lot of these are really sweet and Usually for breakfast, people tend to put a lot more sugar in it than I like to have. Um, so it wound up being, I think, four cups of milk, five cups of rolled oats, however many apples I had, I didn't check them, four whole eggs, a third of a cup of brown sugar, cinnamon, I think a, two teaspoons of baking powder, and um, it was supposed to be one teaspoon of vanilla, but I measure it with a cap. I'm a crazy person. I'm like on, on edge here with the vanilla. So I put two capfuls in it. Um, so I'm just going to mix it up now and we'll see how it goes. Here is the finished mixture. So it looks a little squishy, I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's definitely not something I'd wanna eat in its current form. Um, it's liquidy, it's chunky, it's kinda weird. But we're gonna take all of this and let's see if I can do. I'm learning to hold and camera. Might work, it can happen. Okay, so we're just gonna dump all of that in there. Bloop, 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 bloop. Okay. Oof, that makes terrible sounds too. We don't want that. Okay, so you can just kind of pat the oats down into the mixture. And I like to leave it for a few minutes to kind of soak up and come together. And then after that, I stick it in the oven and it takes forever to cook. So I take it out when it looks like brown around the edges and not soppy like this, if you can see. 
ugh, doesn't look great. Um, it tastes good, doesn't look great. So I'm gonna let this sit on the counter and then I'm gonna stick it in the oven. Oh, wait, wait, we can see the aftermath of what batch slash freezer cooking does to your kitchen. So not too bad today, but that other half of jalapenos that we didn't use because that was some thick jalapenoing going on. The um, meat breakfast sandwiches, the meat breakfast tacos, the little leftover apples in a package, and then the imitation McMuffins with no meat and the tacos with no meat. Some buns that I have found a home for with a friend. She is dropping by soon for those. There is no way we can store all of them. They are excessive. Drink your water, water bottle, very important. The inside of the Instant Pot, I don't even know why that's there. Um, I had the kid do some dishes, I cheated a little bit, but our dishwasher is broken. So we are living in a rent house, so our landlord is coming to fix that, but it is not yet done. And we have been out of water for a few days, so this is not really a great time to do this, but here we are. So we got the squishy stuff that will be oatmeal, the pot that it came out of, a couple pans, not too bad. Let's see, and then the buns that I still have to find something to do with and our Chinese food for lunch because generally on the weekends we go out to get something, but lately we order in. And then the island where all of the magic happens with the mixer. So not too awful. I feel like this way is a lot easier to keep up with and to clean up after than it would be if I did it every day and I constantly had to do dishes and I constantly had to ask the family to help. I think they're a little bit more inclined to be useful one day of a week instead of if I'm interrupting them all the time. We are done for the day. Here's everything packed up. The vegetable slash no meat ones. I really like these um, reusable bags. We normally uh, wash these out and reuse them for things. It just keeps everybody's food kind of together. Uh, so we like doing that, but I don't like all the plastic with especially the plastic wrap inside the bag and then the plastic of the bag. I just think that's a lot. And then here's the ones with pork. Um, got a big bag of those and a couple of bags of the um, breakfast tacos. And I shoved a couple of our muffins in here because they wouldn't fit. And then here is the final oatmeal. I got a little excited. I had some leftover raisins, so I went ahead and shoved those in there. That's the beauty of this oatmeal is you can kind of put whatever in it you want. I know the original recipe calls for nuts, but this week we didn't have very many options for organic nuts. I usually put organic walnuts or pecans in it, but they were out this week. So I found some raisins in the pantry and threw those in as well. This is really hot when it comes out of the oven. It took right at an hour to fully bake and it is scalding. I uh, baked it on 350, but for some reason it just seems like it takes forever to cool down. So it is the next morning and I am worn out. Uh, who knew that it takes so long to film these things and make them and put them away. Um, normally it takes me a couple hours. Yesterday I think it took me about four. Um, so we kind of handed in the towel last night and uh, we're gonna put the baked oatmeal up this morning. And this favorite part about making baked oatmeal is this. I'm gonna have to clean this. There's nobody home to fog it off on. And I'm very disappointed about that. It's like crunchy, you gotta soak it. I don't love that. So we wound up with, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, ten big fat pieces of these. Normally you can make them smaller. Um, I really like these and I feel like I eat them the most. So what I'll do is I'll take them and put them in the microwave, heat them up and um, pour milk over them and then crunch them all together. And if I have like some nuts or something, so then I put nuts in these, I may put that. Um, the kids tend to like the savory stuff a little bit better. So we wound up with 11 meat imitation McMuffins, 12 non-meat imitation McMuffins. Let's see, I don't remember how many breakfast burritos we wound up with. I think it was like, 
15 for meat people and then 10 for non-meat people. So you wound up almost a whole month's worth of breakfast. And I do this every month. Um, so next month I will probably do like some meat for the freezer or some kind of dinners for us to have, um, which we're gonna use some of those today when we cook later this afternoon. Well, there you have it. That's kind of what a bulk breakfast uh, day looks like for us. It's a little bit out of what we would normally do. We do have that probably once a month, uh, but now we have breakfast for everybody for the month. Everything's cleaned up and I get to start doing something else now. <laughs> I almost got through all the dishes. Uh, I left a few forks and knives. I refuse to do anymore after I get prinkled. Like once you get pruned, I feel like you should get to stop. Our dishwasher is broken. I picked a really bad time to do a bulk cooking, any kind, um, but here we are. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Oh,